Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be rebuilding every single team in VCT Pacific. Now, there's going to be less teams in this video than there would have been in my Americas and my uh, EMEA series. Like, I went through most of the teams in Pacific in the actual like individual videos rather than this end of the uh, end of the series like recap kind of thing. So this is going to be kind of going through all the moves that were made by every team. But if you want to hear me talk a little bit more in depth about each team, you can go check out the individual videos. I made one on Zeta, T1, um, DFM, Global. I made one on Bleed when they were still in the league. So if you want to go check that out in case you're curious what I would have done with that roster, uh, you can go check that out as well. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. So with the remaining six teams you have two different groups. You have the teams that made no changes, which I have Genji, Talon, and RRQ. Not really too much explanation needed there. Genji, I mean, obviously they made changes in real life, not willingly, obviously. I think they, if they could have, they would have kept these five together, considering how well they did last year. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, no explanation needed there. Talon, I think some people could want maybe one or two roster changes with this team. Specifically, one probably I'd go with. Um, I don't know exactly who would probably be somewhere in like Gov Jip Boys band, maybe. I don't know exactly. Um, but I think that team just getting the chance to develop a little bit more after not really having too much like team like time together as a team leading even leading up into champs last year. I think giving them more time as a team could be good. And then our RQ, I did consider making a change specifically around like the duelist or initiator slots but i i still do think this time could use or this team could use some time to gel together considering they only really had split two with monye last year so giving them a little bit more time in the offseason could be good obviously they end up bringing in kush here in real life which i think is still a decent move i didn't really know too much about him i haven't watched a ton about uh, a ton of him yet but he seems pretty decent from what i've seen then we get into the three teams making changes now I think this team secret move I want to talk about first, Mind Freak specifically going to them. I don't think it fits with the languages. So if you want to in your head, you could put in DOS 9 if that fits. Um, I don't exactly know. Or just any Filipino like cracked out smokes player. Uh, I'd be good with that. Uh, or just any Filipino like ranked player even. Like you could go with that. Like just... Throw some cracked kid in this role or mind freak who is an extremely high level experienced player. And I think you get the same, maybe not the same effect as uh, each other, but like I would do either. And I'm, I'd am i be very high on them making that kind of move. Uh, just because I don't think, um, oh my God, what's his name? 2GE was particularly good for them last year. I was kind of surprised to see that uh, Secret wasn't making any changes. I honestly almost consider blowing this roster up because I don't think they're going to reach anything higher than like maybe making the back end of an international event and losing immediately, but I don't know. Then for Paper Rex, we're actually going to be switching to more of a solid or like a normal team uh, kind of setup here with this team. So Jing will be playing like the Rays, the Neon for this team, obviously, and then Hopefully you can get him to learn a little bit more of the like flex, like flash initiator stuff to play when something is playing the jet in the Yoru. Um, and then the other one can play. Uh, and then something can, and yeah, something can learn more of the other flex flash initiator stuff for when Jing is playing the neon and, uh, and rays. Then Forsaken will be playing like the scan and, Info initiator stuff like the Sky, the Soba, the Fade, uh, maybe some Viper, some Sentinel in there, maybe. I don't know exactly. Divi will be playing the more Sentinel stuff. Maybe he'll come in and play some Sky when Forsaken wants to play Sentinel. Depends what they want to do there with that exactly. But then Excurate, I'm going to bring us the IGL here. Uh, I think he did pretty decently on T1 last year. He had a very set style of it that he liked, and I think that could be pretty good for this team. It was a lot of putting pressure on one side of the map and then kind of using the sentinel like chamber lurker on the weak side of the map to kind of take a lot of space with that 
I think if you're going to do that, maybe Forsaken could be more of your uh, Sentinel player because I think he was really good at that style back in like 2022 uh, with the Chamber meta. And then Divi could play more of your scan. You'd have to get him to play Sova or something to play Sova, which I, I don't think I'd like that necessarily. But yeah, I think this team is in an interesting spot. I think they needed to make a roster change. They didn't in real life, which is mind boggling to me. So I don't know. maybe they come into next year with a huge new look or something like that, but I highly doubt it. Uh, and then their last up is DRX, who I'm going to make one change with. I'm going to swap out, uh, I believe, Foxy9 here for Akame. Foxy9, I think, showed a lot last year, uh, good and bad, mainly the good on the Sentinel role. I think he actually showed some nice stuff on the flex as well, but it wasn't like awesome by any means. Um, and I think this team does need some kind of change. I think you could have maybe swapped out Bane for somebody else, but I think Akame is just the best player that you're going to possibly get in this role. So I, I end up keeping Buzz here just because, like, I mean, it's Buzz, obviously, and for all these teams, the money isn't really a factor. So, like, when T1 goes and offers Buzz an insane contract, obviously he's going to go take that rather than stick with DRX, who is kind of the smaller Korean org. Uh, compared to them in, in Genji. So you end up getting to keep him here in this game, or in this world, I guess, kind of same deal with how Genji works. Uh, then Bane, I'm going to keep, just because I... They did the thing in real life where they swapped out like three of their players. I think one or two changes might have been good. Obviously, they didn't want to lose Buzz, um, but still, that's a whole other conversation. Mako stays as the IGL. I think he looked actually pretty good at that. Uh, the fragging was a little less consistent, but I still think it was uh, had its peaks like during that Paper X game uh, and Stage 2 playoffs, I believe it was. He was very good. Um, and then Flashback, who was also very, very, very good on the Sentinel roll, now being swapped off of it, which didn't make sense to me. So, like, if they were going to... If they were going to put Flashback on, like, Initiator stuff, why not just keep Foxy9 and put him on Sentinel? Like, just keep developing him there, or something like that. I don't know. That didn't make sense to me. We'll get into that more with some of my, uh, like, leading up to the season content that I'll probably talk about in a later video, just because uh, it's not really coming yet. But I will be having some random videos here and there. Like, I'll probably do a um, an agent tier list at some point throughout the off season here i don't know exactly when uh and we'll see there there's going to be some other stuff in there probably i don't really have any set ideas but go check out my second channel link will be in the description if it's not then it'll be in the description of my t1 video um so go go look there if it's not i might forget to add it or something but still regardless if you guys enjoy like and subscribe really helps me out and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one peace